life just takes you where you're meant to go, you know? Um, I fought against this for so long, you have no idea. I don't want to do it, it's not for me, I, I can't do it. Why me? Don't ask me, you know? My mother, who I, my hero, said to me, as a Christian, God gives you more than you can handle and so you can't handle it and then when you've broken he gives you a bit more <laughs> and you are going to have to do something with this information because that's who you are. I met the Israeli divorce system, the family court system, I met it 10 years ago, 12 years ago and that's where it all started really. fighting to get one guy out, fighting to fighting lies, lie after lie, not understanding that telling the truth here gets you nowhere as a man. And it just kind of went from there. Um, I couldn't get him out, nothing, no, you can't, you can't beat the system in Israel. I thought you could. No, beat the system's wrong. I thought the system would help me, but I didn't realise it was there to break me. And you can't, you can't fight it. And it took me 10 years to learn that as an English person, that there was no justice here. And it destroyed our marriage. Um, and he tried to kill himself. Because he couldn't do it anymore. While I was at the UN trying to beg for his life. So I wrote a book, put it behind me, put a website out, as you do. And thought, bye bye Israel, I can't do this anymore. And then everyone contacted me. Email, email, me, 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 help me, help me, help me, 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 me. And I couldn't not do something. I couldn't save my husband. So let me I'm saving everybody else. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't run around asking to save people. Let's get this. I really don't go running around going, I'm going to save you. They come to me. It just evolved, you know, they came, they came to me. I went to the UN, I went back again, I went back again, and then before you know it, it's your life, isn't it? There's nothing you can do about it. There is the land of Israel, and the state of Israel. Yeah, and in Hebrew they would say Medina, or Aretz. Medina is country, directly translated, and Aretz is the land. You won't meet anyone here who's been touched by the system who does not want to destroy the state. Because for them, the state and the system are the same thing. The land and the people, they love it. But the state, they hate. Now, outside Israel, people think if you criticize the system, you want to destroy the state. So the words are very, you know, specific. That I am very much against the system, but it doesn't mean I'm against like you want to destroy it, it just means you've got to change it. So I'm not trying to destroy Israel, demonize it, I'm just... God, half my blood's Israeli after 30 years here now. Hey. Hey. Hello. Hi. Oh. I finally see you. Shame. Huh? I'm very happy that you came. Why would I not come if you asked me? So you expect the Patactic for police tonight, Ariel? Yes, in a few minutes. So you should say hi to Soren because he's interested in you. How are you? What's going on? How are I haven't seen you three months. What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Good morning. אביחי מנדלבליט, אתה חושב שאתה עומד בראש מערכת הצדק בישראל? אתה עומד בראש מערכת מושחתת על יציבות מערכת מושחתת ששומרת על יציבות כיסאות ותו לא. איך אתה ישן בלילה, אביחי מנדלבליט? אריאל, שתי וחצי דקות. We didn't even start to speak, which is the law. You can actually make a freedom of speech. But we have a situation. <laughs>
לממשלה, 16 ביולי 2016, מוצאי שבת, באנו להזכיר לך שאנחנו לא שוכחים אותך. The police have been called very quickly. This is quite fast, actually. Usually we can do it quicker. Legal protest. This is going to turn into quite something. Actually, it's a legal protest. This is, I've never seen one quite like this before. The neighbors are very upset. The neighbors are very upset. They're not happy about this. But it is not illegal to speak outside for a few minutes. So basically, they are making the protest about the corruption. Had it been another activist or two, this would have been a prison job, but... As you can see, everybody's always filming. It's been a while since I've been to a demonstration, folks, in England and uh, English speakers, and I'm running out of battery. The corruption is just way, way too much. And these people have been fighting it for 13 years. Fighting years. Police aren't going to get involved right now. Neighbors are watching. No, great neighborhood, by the way. Neighbors watching. People stopping in their cars. This is a hell of a neighborhood to do a protest outside the Attorney General's house. I think we're done here for now. Today, we're going to a place that I've never been to called Neely, Neely, which is a settlement in um, the occupied territory. And we're going to hunt for a baby. We're hunting the baby. Every year, his ex-partner makes an attempt to just take the boy for the summer without telling him. Last year, she took him for three months to Jerusalem, to her parents' house, her mother's house, um, which was, you know, an hour or so away. And Ariel fought in the court to have him return to Petak Tikva, where the agreement is that he should be raised. The judge finally agreed and told her that if she did it again, she'd be sanctioned because she'd broken the agreement. Three weeks ago, she upped and left. <laughs> she just moved. She just moved from her house to an unknown location and took the boy. Um, can you believe it? Two and a half years old, he's raising him, you know, three days a week, four days a week. And he doesn't know where he is. He's not seen him, spoken to him. He had, no, he had a bad feeling. No one listened to him. And there she, did, she went. So he went to the court to find out where she lived. Her lawyer showed up and said she'd made a request to move to Jerusalem, which hadn't been accepted, and she was allowed to move to a place called Neely, which is a settlement halfway between the two. Now she, we learned yesterday, has a free lawyer, and she's earning twice the amount of money of the limit to, to get a free legal, you know, legal aid. And we learned again yesterday that it's dependent, her legal aid, on the income of the child. Right, so he's two and a half, he's not great, he hasn't got a job yet, he can barely, he's only good walking and talking, but he hasn't got a job. So because the boy has no income, the legal aid lawyer is provided on behalf of the child. And because children here under six go with the mother, even though this contract says it's not the case, as his guardian, the legal aid she gets because he can't speak for himself. What a loophole. So based on the information that he's so far got, we are going today to this settlement. Ariel's gonna be there and we're gonna see on a door-to-door -door basis if the boy lives here. I think you should go to this house with children because they will know what's going on with the kindergarten. Who is it? Abraham, it's a baby. Ah, it's a baby. Yeah. Do you want me to see it? Yeah. Today? Yeah, today. Yeah. 
It seems that he's not here. Hello. Hello. Uh, אמור להיות פתוח, נכון? אני עם ילדים בגיל של גן. drive with Avram. It means he's inside a building here somewhere because the mm -hmm. car's parked in the seats here. Mm -hmm. So he's inside a building. Mm -hmm. I think he might have nailed the two properties because over here there's a driveway. Yes. Hello. 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 ‫למה <laughs> 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 She's found, he's found that she's 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 found that I told Marian that if we, uh, I don't think, I, I didn't thought that he will be here near uh, Modin or in Ili or in, in these settlements. So I told Marian that if we will find him here, I will buy her a steak. And you, and you too, uh, uh, Sorin. So uh, you earned your steak, <laughs> fair and square. <laughs> and I'm happy now. At least we know where Abraham is. I can have my smoke. At least we know that he's not in a, another country or he's just uh, nearby in the occupied territories, in the settlements or whatever, nearly. A few houses and a lot of mountains, nothing more. And what's the next step? What now? I don't know. We must consult uh, with uh, Yaniv. We don't want uh, uh, the, the neighbors where she lives to be frightened or be terrified by us. It's like we're trying to do something because this is a very odd situation. You're coming and uh, looking for your child and uh, you're showing a picture. Did you, did you saw this child or not? So I just went into the door. I showed them uh, the picture in the telephone. And she said no, and she starts smiling. So that was uh, very suspicious for me, that uh, she smiled like, uh, like she's not, she doesn't want to tell me something. So I, we, we continued to search here, and then we went downstairs, and then I saw his bike yeah. in, this, uh, in, the, in the garden. And uh, when I saw the, the bike, I understood why is, uh, she smiled about. Jewish fathers in Israel experience this same situation all over the country. I'm not a, I'm, uh, I'm not, I'm not a special case. I'm, I'm the easiest case. I'm the... Uh, uh, other fathers are experiencing things much worse than, than I have been through. I, I'm, I'm just a... A, a month here, a month there, uh, half a year. Uh, I, I, they, she, she's kidnapped him uh, for uh, eight months. She kidnapped him for 35 uh, days. For uh, now, it's a, uh, it's the fifth time. It's a, uh, it's a month. This is not, uh, this is not like the big, the big cases, the, 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 the crazy cases which uh, dads in Israel, Jewish dads in Israel. That's the hatred uh, men of all time 
uh, when you are a, a Israeli, a Jewish, a man, father. No, we're not getting that out. Okay. Okay, everything's out on my phone. Hi. Hi. I don't understand. I mean, we're just, we film all over the world and we never have this. Okay. Okay. The first time. No problem. I'll follow you. Yeah. You need. Okay, a couple of things you need. Quickie, because I've only got a second before the police take me. They won't let us out of this bloody town. They stopped us at the, you know, security. So my passport is in that car. They've taken my passport. The only means of ID and travel I have in the world is in that car. And I can't do anything about it. So we now have a situation where we just came to see a little boy, a little boy. There wasn't much else going on. But uh, here we are. And I haven't committed a crime. You listen to me. Okay, that's all. That's all. Sorry. About the ID, I will check. I give you answer. What? Wait. When you said tomorrow. No, 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 no. They're not taking the camera. Right. Okay, so we just had, uh, we're on our 10th hour, something like that. 10 hours we were held in the police, uh, three hours and then we were arrested. And then we waited another three hours before we were questioned. We were implicated in a criminal offence, which was trespassing. Um, I was told by the chief of police that if you go through to a house that has a gate, it's trespass. So then he kind of changed that to an open gate, isn't so we didn't trespass at all. However, the only reason, and I will say this on here, the only reason that we got out of there tonight was because I took, I took a chance and I texted my lawyer and told him we'd been there two hours and he put the alarm calls out. Um, I think about five or uh, three hours was up and we were told we were arrested, but we did not afford. They wouldn't tell us. They were very aggressive, very difficult. And then, lo and behold, in comes a lawyer. Uh, so the text worked um, and we were treated differently from there on in. But it still took maybe seven hours before we were questioned. Um, Ariel, the father, is being held tonight and he's going to be 24 hours held because it's the weekend. It shouldn't be that way, but because it's Saturday, they're going to keep him there. OK, today um, we're going into Jaffa uh, to see the Collins family. Uh, the Collins family comprises of um, Annette, the grandmother, uh, Marigold, the mother, Moses, the brother, and two little girls, Becky and Sylvie, who are ten and a half. Three years ago, these children were taken from the mother Marigold by social services on the spurious grounds of a little lack of education, ADHD, don't know what it was, no idea, but they took them. The children are generating 17 and a half thousand shekel a month profit to these institutions. Um, that's 35,000 a month per child, for twins. And They've been in there for three years. How many millions and millions and millions of shekels profit have these children generated? No, you are not. I'm shy. They want to be artists. They want to be uh, dancers and singers. And they also want to work in a cap. I said to him today when we were coming, in a cab, the cab drivers isn't a, a, a fun job to do. Fun jobs to do is being what you wanted to do. What did you want to do when you were in eighth grade? 
when you were eight years old? Eight. With me. last what you not one? I bayani. I'm bayani in chip bamach. Okay, now this is something that they want me to translate. These little girls at eight years old, when they were in third grade, before they were taken, they wanted to make a bionic eye for blind animals and blind people with a chip in the, in the brain so blind people can see. I think it's brilliant. Ah, were you sure, Isaiah? It was at seven years old when they were in second grade. I made a mistake. I got confused. This one is Becky's work. What's left on of all the paints from the drawing session on the plate? They go like this and they put it on the plate and what comes they bring it up and they say that's a painting. Now Becky said it's no, like it's like a kiss, um a big balagan but it's actually art and it's very good art. <laughs> Sylvia and Becky have been in Megadim, SOS Children's Village for the last year and eight months. A year before that, a year and six months before that. They were in Vito SOS, emergency shelter. What would that do to your relationship with your sister or brother? What would that do to your relationship with your family? You lose trust. You don't believe anyone anymore. They're right now I'm trying to build their trust back in people. And it's taking a lot of power and a lot of struggle. And we're fighting it every day. And every day I'm trying to having to build their trust back up in people, especially in us. They do a house, a house with a home. This is our home. They do a home. They do a home. We come home. We want to come home. Now nine o'clock, it's Saturday night, so the Shabbat has gone. And we're heading to the Russian compound, which is a prison and a court. I've been there last year, actually, uh, for another activist. And we're going for the case of Ariel, who last yesterday we found looking for his kid. Ariel's been held since, what, quarter past two yesterday, same time as me. Um, so we're talking 24, 30 hours, something like that. He has the best lawyer in town at the moment, Yannick Moyal, who is going to help him. And we are going to do everything to get him out. There's no reason. It's like uh, they treat ev everybody with a big hammer. It doesn't matter what the problem is, it's all a big hammer. It's related to family courts or dispute in a family because everybody's enjoying it. It's a lot of money involved. Lawyers enjoying it, everybody enjoying it. They got used to the system works this way. Nobody wants to change it because people say, you know, as long as it works, it's not perfect, we'll leave it that way. It doesn't matter how many lives it ruins, it doesn't matter how many people commit suicide, it doesn't matter how many people, it doesn't pay to change the system when it involves some stuff like that. It's a function that provides They told me I cannot talk to him until tomorrow. I said, but he needs to be released at 2 o'clock. He said, yeah, okay, so, so what? When you have the, the power to make some people miserable, you will do it. Why? Why people are doing Why? This? Because uh, it's human nature. If you have a power to do something, you'll do it.
human nature. It's human nature that it's, bad. Human nature is uh, to control other people. I mean, you look, you look at the history of humanity. It's all about control others in any kind of form. Everybody wants power. Everybody wants to feel important that he can control you, that he can do anything that he wants with you. If you take uh, United States, for example, if you have to pay alimonies or you have to pay child support, it's as a percentage of your income, and it goes automatically. In Israel, it doesn't work like that. It just It's like every judge decides whatever he wants. It doesn't care if you have if you have any money left to feed yourself or to feed your kids while you're while they're in your custody they don't care if uh, slavery is illegal in Israel I will tell you there is a slavery in other forms when you slave uh, to a system that force you to work 20 days a, a month and give all your salary to somebody else this is slavery Sababa, how do you make fun of Sababa? You did it again, darling. Yeah, he did, he did, he did. Yeah. yeah, and everybody came and made Facebook headlines. Yeah. They all made Facebook headlines. Yeah. Mossy made you a video with 3,000 views, 4,000 views, blah, blah, blah. You all turned up and then you all went. Yeah. So yeah. you're a hero. Avram, this is for Avram. This is for, uh, only for Abraham. I have an hour that I sell my flowers. Usually I get rid of some. I'm going to get rid of the hot half of this today. And now I have about three or four more that are regulars that come around this time. I took them to see Madame Butterfly, the opera. I, I wasn't sure they would like it. I wasn't sure they'd have the patience to listen to another language, Italian, for an hour and a half. An hour, they were quiet like this. And they were, ah! <laughs> they enjoyed it. Then at 9.30, Ima, we're tired. Ima, we're tired. We're too tired. We want to go home. There was only half an hour more, so they didn't see the sun. The sad ending of Madame Butterfly. Oh, you're still upset? I don't, I keep on telling women and men out there on the fight that are, oh, it's the men's fight and the women's fight and it, it's the children's fight. It's their fight. I believe in, I believe that if, if JJ Anderson knocked on the door and said, I want to see my girls, I would let him. I wouldn't start on, but you didn't pay any child support. You never gave any money to the kids. You never helped us. That's not what's important. The girl, it's important that the girls meet him. It's important that the girls know he, they have a father. Even if he's not there, that they know who he is. They were made in love, and then we fell out of love. But that doesn't mean that they weren't made in love. And for that love that they were made in, I have to respect them. Them, not me. Them, Becky and Sylvia. I know that they eventually will give them back when, whenever they want to. But I don't want it when they want to. I want them home now. 
I want them home now so we can start rebuilding, healing as a family. I want to take them down to a let's swim with the dolphins and a week out on the beach there so they can breathe and not be in jail 24 seven because this is where they are. It's a jail for children. This is what I feel that they're allowing you to see your children, but they don't want to allow you to rebuild the relationship back. Even with the summer holiday that they were here for 19 days and then 17 days. That should be another sign of them coming home. If it was a sign of them coming home, why haven't they been put back into the same room together? After Ariel got out of prison um, on Saturday night and had a restraining order for three days from Neely, um, the lawyer told us that once those three days were up, his visitation custody, joint custody, would revert to what it was before, which means he was due to collect Avraham uh, on Thursday, be re reunited with his son after a month, and all would kind of go back to normal. But there's no such thing here, and we doubted it anyway. Last night, um, his ex-partner um, raised a new lawsuit uh, saying that basically Ariel had threatened her life and her son. She was living in fear. She didn't know what she was going to do. And she wanted a restraining and protection order for her and her son for as long as you know she could get it. She also, as I understand it, and we will get confirmation, went to the Women's Domestic Abuse and Violence Center through Vito or whoever to report that she was in fear and that she was living in a violent situation. Again, she's earning a good amount of money in the Supreme Court where she works and she only registered this violence, we understand, yesterday. So if this was true, why didn't she register all this before? It's a common trick that women do. Avram has a room of his own, uh, which, is, which is quite nice uh, for a little boy to have. Uh, he likes to go to sea, so there's a lot of uh, toys that's uh, talking about uh, uh, all kind of machinery to go to the sea and operate these toys with sand and uh, water. The uh, family courts in Israel are so uh, terrified for men. We bought uh, three times uh, uh, more uh, than uh, every child should have. This is uh, almost three years old uh, uh, boy. He have uh, uh, we don't we don't have where to put the 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 shirts where to put the the, the trousers or or the underwears. Uh, everything, everything is actually new because uh, uh, all uh, Israeli fathers are don't, not going to discotheques or uh, going to have a beer. Beer, it's a, it's a, it's a pri privilege. It's, a, it's like a, something that you will never get because uh, all your money, with, a, with an emphasis on all, uh, is for the child alone means that you have to buy three times the three times the Superman, three times the the Maradona, three times everything is three times. Uh, 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 three times the, the the sheets because if a, a so called SS social worker uh, will come to check, uh, which is uh, something terrified, uh, you will have a uh, at least uh, uh, three times more than a child should have to uh, show her that uh, everything is okay and she will uh, never, she, she could never say something about it. And the judge is sitting, making a serious face, like it's a, like a, they are talking with a criminal 
and, he sh- and, and, would, uh, and his punishment now is after he spent all his money for two cupboards full with all the children, uh, with, with what the children need. I, I could raise a, a whole family here, but there is only one child. She, the, the punishment is buying a third cupboard and buying the, in the third time uh, clothes and everything for, for uh, Abraham. And while he won't use it, it will go to the trash because he, can, he doesn't need the third cupboard. He doesn't need te- three times the clothes. He doesn't need it. It will go to the trash. So they are actually, they are actually uh, uh, controlling your money. For no cause, it's only one boy. Well, they have the Israeli Nakai's police to help them. They can beat you if you won't buy a third cupboard. There isn't any human rights in Israel since, uh, because, because of this reason, because Israel is not participating in the declaration of uh, human rights. We don't have an independent ombudsman, an international independent ombudsman, so there isn't anyone to complain to. So we, we, we hope that in time the United Nations will help us as, as uh, human beings like everybody else. Because they are thinking that uh, we are like the, the Israeli government, which is uh, absolutely ridiculous. We, we are not like them. It's the opposite. We are controlled by them and uh, suffering uh, uh, a lot of human rights violations because we are uh, living in this country. That's why I asked my father, uh, because uh, when he came here, he came from Lithuania. And I asked him, uh, well, Father, why didn't you come here? Uh, uh, you had the uh, opportunity to go to Canada from uh, Lithuania. Why did you come to Israel? So he said to me, listen, uh, uh, my son, I was an uh, uh, idealist, uh, and uh, yeah, a young idealist and a fool. So that's a uh, sort of a... Uh, Uh, admission in these uh, circumstances. So, uh, what can uh, you say to uh, an old guy who is uh, just want to make good? He, did, he didn't uh, knew that uh, that's what he will uh, cope with, or we will cope with. Now my son is coping with it. <laughs> I went to Germany, but uh, but I can't uh, leave uh, Abraham here in this uh, country to suffer. That's what we are doing. About what? About what? What did I say last night? I don't know how many times I have to tell people what my life is, or, or and I don't want to, you know, and I don't for the most part to uh, uh, justify anything because I don't ask anyone in the world to tell me what they do with their life or their thoughts or their feelings or their uh, time, and yet I'm on the, you know constantly on a platform that people are uh, deciding that they own me and that they can tell me this is your politics, this is your feelings, this is your personal life, your public life, you're, you are, you know, the devil. And, and they make these decisions without actually asking me or even listening to what I have to say. And, uh, you know, it's been, I mean, I had it all yesterday through various routes 
uh, here and there um, from different people. And I'm get, and then I've got, to, you know, two nights I go to sleep and two nights I wake up to stuff I don't even, you know, that I've done things while I've been asleep. Um, you know, I, I, <laughs> as soon as I go to sleep, I seem to create a disaster. Uh, I should stay awake. Um, but honestly, you think I was here to kill people. You know, I just don't. I mean, I, 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 of course I can take it for uh, the most part, but I'm still only a human being, you know. Okay. I've never heard such paranoia of, you, you know, you're going to get thrown out. He's convinced I'm going to be arrested today. Uh, seized, thrown, you know, into interrogation and my phone seized. I went, what? Well, everyone sits in cafes with phones. What's the deal? I mean, like, everybody sits in cafes <laughs> looking at their phones. Um, so I said, I can't deal with it. I can't deal with it. Just, you know, don't come. Fine. Don't worry about it. Um, you have to cancel. You have to cancel. We'll do everything underground. I'm watching you. Okay, okay. Thanks for your concern. But no one's going to kill me. No one's going to arrest me. No one's going to evict me just for sitting in a cafe talking to people. It's, it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. I mean, who's ever been arrested for sitting in a cafe, you know? I'm not rounding people up and screaming in the park, am I? I'm just chatting to people with a coffee, making a video and on they go. Okay, time to go. And so I said I would sit in this cafe all afternoon and if people want to come and talk, they can. I know that in Israel, very few people come when they say they will. So I'm told you should only get 1% of who said they'd come. <laughs> and after somebody posted it in Hebrew on the wrong group, all the factions are arguing and fighting and saying they're not going to come. Or You're talking to them, they're talking to you. Forget the cause, forget the struggle. Let's all fight with each other. So I might be sitting in a cafe all day for nothing. What would you like to tell the world about the problems of ordinary people in Israel? Uh, ordinary people in Israel, uh, everything that they do is taking a chance. So if you if you bring a child to the world, you you take a chance. If you want to be a father, it's a chance. It's not it's not uh, sure that you will be the father. So you are the father on the paper. You father. But they don't give you to see the child. If if you can see the child, okay. If you don't see the child, also okay, no problem. It's your problem. What exactly that's made your life so miserable? My crime that I'm a citizen of Israel that I marry the wrong woman. And how many children do you have? I have two children. They are today 16 years old twins. When is the last time you saw them? The boy I saw before one and a half year. The girl, the last time I saw was before four years. It cost me a lot of money. I don't say a word. So I have to go out from work now, go out from work now. Everything what to do I, can, I want to do. But no, but nothing is help. Everybody don't care. Everybody don't care. So you have no rights? No rights. My problem. Okay, thank you. Well, I came for a long weekend in January 2001 for my son's bar mitzvah. So it's now been 16 years uh, that I've been held without notice. For the entire 16 year period to today, 100% of my assets, earnings, and salaries are taken. I am precluded from a driver's license. I'm even precluded from membership in any of the health and medical organizations. So I'm actually outside of the medical system. It is shocking. Uh, one does not comprehend when you go wheels up at JFK or SFO that you're leaving the Bill of Rights behind. Somehow you think when you land in a country like India or the Philippines or Israel, that if something goes wrong, you can go to your embassy. Uh, it's shocking to discover that the embassy wants nothing to do with you. In a democratic country. In a democratic country. And I want to underscore, we were divorced in California. Our divorce is a California divorce. We are not divorced in Israel. We're two Americans. We were divorced in San Jose, California in 1998. So she just came here to use the system against you? Correct.
It's a trick that a lot of Americans fall for. Uh, unfortunately, it's a trick that many American Jews play. Because but of we're the not e- We're not even discussing um, a difference of opinion or legality between Israel and the United States. Our divorce is a California divorce. It's remarkable. No, you're past all sense of humanity. It's gone. It, that's a long time. You've gone 16 years at 100%. You're not permitted a bank account. You're not even permitted medicine. Uh, by definition, the court is saying you are not permitted basic human rights. You are not human. You're not human. And you can't leave the country. You have a no exit no, order. you cannot leave the country. I have an almost 18-year-old daughter who I, uh, almost am, I haven't seen because of parental alienation. Long story. It's voicing our hardships, our, our protests in channels that may be anti-Israel, or anti-Jewish, that it's a hard thing, and but we lack our own channels, and we, we need the help, and uh, in the sense of it may be misused, but it is uh, still free press, free, free protest in a way here, and so uh, it has to be raised, and it, it helps to expose us this way. Um, how uh, far down has the uh, democracy or the freedom of speech or the uh, remedies got uh, to the point that this has to happen? Um, it's, it's, it's hurting in the sense of, of uh, uh, internet and maybe less channels and uh, control of the social media and protest and uh, and the social system that uh, legal, social work, social services whatever systems that can marginalize, denigrate uh, citizen protest, uh, that's kind of hidden on the side, and it's not, uh, it really is hard to pinpoint exactly uh, when and how it it began, but... uh, Did did the system hurt you in your life? Did the system support you as a man, or not support you as a man? uh, No, it uh, definitely hurt my daughter, and it hurt me, and uh, when I went to the welfare with a uh, complaint. They didn't really investigate it. They uh, prevaricated. They just judged the, the weight of who has more protection and they favored mothers. Also in, in denigrating me, uh, in marginalizing, they use even the social psychiatry to say I was more R. I mean, that means like uh, uh, psychiatric. Although I told the, the psychiatrist that I don't agree with her her diagnosis and it don't accept the prescription. So, nevertheless, it fits on your record and they can easily marginalize you. I've served this country in the army. I've gone through hell during the army. Uh, I salute the flag. I love my country and my country is the place where I live. I cannot leave this country. Um, I feel like I'm locked in a cage. I cannot drive my the truck and that means that I've got no living as well. My wife is the only supporter of the family. She earns nickels and uh, she's she's divorced as I am. So what saves us is the alimony she gets from her ex-husband which is not in a good shit, in a good economical situation as well. And sometimes it's kept the alimonies. And I went to the uh, social services and I told them that we found difficulties of like making a living. And we're, we're afraid that very soon we won't have enough money to buy our children food. And their first reply was, okay, so if you, tr- if you don't have enough food, to feed your children, will come and take them away to a place which would feed them. Zoran, it's over with. We're going to collect the girls. I'm about 15 minutes from Migdala, Emek. It's over with. I'm taking them and I don't ever have to bring them back here. Well, I'm going in, I'm going to get the suitcases and we're coming out as fast as we can and we're going home. Now, this your after this girl, you turn around and go that way. Back. Left. And we're not going to the entrance. The entrance what? is behind us. No, the all the way to the entrance. What? No, because I don't want to risk that they stop the girls coming home. We'll park here.
No, it's okay. It's okay. Everything's yeah. fine, Moses. Um, Everything's fine. We won't go into the. We're going to the parking lot. They'll park over here. We'll come this way. Yeah, and I'm afraid because of the camera that they might stop me. So we're parking ten feet away from the from the boarding school, the jail. You can get out of the car and see the gate. You guys are going to wait over here. There we go. Yeah. So this is the gate over there? Yeah, that's the gate over there. Well, well, well. You have some free children. <laughs> you won. It's up on the foot. Everything is done.